very error you represent, and that is tritheism that you are accusing us of. What the Bible says is that in Christ dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. What the Bible says is that God was manifest in the flesh. That's what the Bible says. I'm giving you what Scripture says. What Mr. White has given you is that there's three divine minds in God, three separate individuals that the Bible never says, and I'm jeopardizing my soul. I would say that is the jeopardizing of a soul. On his ancient heresies, 26, 25 mark, he says the father and son are distinguishable individuals. So we got God the Father who's an individual, God the Son who's an individual, God the Holy Spirit who's an individual. Each is fully God, but one is not the other. Each has their own separate center of consciousness. Each has their own mind. He said uh, two weeks ago, October 7th, I think it was, that I assume that they only have one center of consciousness and there's only one center of consciousness in God, which means he holds to more than one center of consciousness in God. And you're going to tell me you've got one God still? Absolutely not. It is conceptual tritheism. I would ask you, does each divine individual in the Trinity possess their own separate mind or center of consciousness apart from the other two divine persons? That's how they recognize each other and interact with each other. It is historic Christian doctrine to believe that the Father, the Son, and the Spirit are distinguishable divine persons fully sharing the one being that is God. Are you comfortable then saying that the historic doctrine, Christian doctrine of the Trinity worships a three-minded God? No. So then you are comfortable saying that each divine individual has their own center of consciousness? Yes, of course. I'm, I'm going to ask you one more time. Are you comfortable then saying that the historic doctrine, Christian doctrine of the Trinity worships a three-minded God? No. There must be centers of consciousness to which love is a meaningful attribute. Separate, in, separate centers of consciousness in God. Well, that's, the, that's how persons relate to one another and speak to one another. All right, but so, so I wouldn't, if you don't want to say mind, that's fine. If you want to say centers of consciousness. And so I am asking, you are comfortable saying that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit each have separate minds, or centers of consciousness. I've affirmed that three times now. All right. Uh, he says that if you deny the Son, then you, you don't have the Father. Yeah, exactly. And he brought up John chapter 14 as well in the same context. Yeah, John chapter 4. What does John 14 say? Have I been so long with you, Philip, that you still don't know me? He that has seen me has seen the Father. What sense does that make? What kind, if you ask me to see my, my father and my father is a separate person than I am that has his own mind apart from me, and I responded by, hey, don't you know that the one that I've been with you all this time, you're still asking to see? It would make no sense whatsoever. But Jesus did not hesitate to use singular personal pronouns when asked about the location of the Father. Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still don't know me? It makes absolutely no sense from a Trinitarian perspective. The reason that you, if you deny the Son, you don't have the Father is because the Son is the one Old Testament God manifest in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16, which he argues for in his book, the King James only controversy says they asked God was manifest in the flesh it's not a different God or a second individual with his own mind it's just God who was manifest to us in the flesh and he tells us that his concern and I appreciate his concern I really do but we have equal concern uh, he says that he is afraid that our position would cut off from eternity if worshiping a three-minded God that no one knew existed from 70% of the Bible and 4,000 years of Hebrew revelation, though they knew him on the most intimate terms, does not jeopardize one's salvation. I don't know what does. We don't have another Jesus coming. We have the same God of the Old Testament coming in the flesh to die for our sins. Um, in John chapter 17, 
he says that it's not the human side conversing with the divine side. Well, let me tell you what else it wasn't. It wasn't God the Son talking to God the Father. It wasn't one God who has his own mind talking to another God that has his own mind. He said, well, it's persons. The text doesn't say persons. You can't just make up your own Bible, ladies and gentlemen. 